landmark Supreme Court case, Buckley v. Vallejo, is all about campaign financing and what is legal and appropriate when it comes to expenditures and finances in a campaign. This case was argued in 1975 and officially decided in 1976 by a per curiam decision. This case revised the Federal Election Campaign Act, which was originally penned in 1971, but then again revised in 1974, which was the year before this case. Originally, James L. Buckley filed a lawsuit in the District Court of D.C. against Francis R. Vallejo and the Federal Election Campaign Act. Vallejo was the Secretary of the U.S. Senate and ex officio member of the Federal Election Commission. Buckley claimed that the Federal Election Campaign Act violated the First and Fifth Amendment rights. This was a very controversial case. There were numerous opinions on the matter expressed by each justice, as well as, at minimum, five acts of legislation already put in place regarding campaign finance. Ultimately, the court agreed with the appellant, Buckley, and took away spending limits for campaigns by citizens, but upheld personal campaign spending limits where a candidate spends money on his or her own campaign. Before the Federal Election Campaign Act came the Tillman Act of 1907, named after Benjamin Tillman. This act banned corporate contributions to campaigns. There was also the Federal Corrupt Practices Act, passed in 1910, then the Hatch Act in 1939, the Smith-Connolly Act of 1943, and the Taft-Harley Act of 1947. All these acts addressed corruption in the federal campaign world. After all these acts, there came the Federal Election Campaign Act. It was written in 1971, and it was introduced to the Senate by John O. Pastor on May 6, 1971. This bill was given to the Senate Finance Committee and was passed in both houses of Congress by November 30th of 1971. On February 7th, 1972, President Nixon signed the bill into law and was effective immediately as of April. The Federal Election Campaign Act was amended in 1974, which was right before the Buckley v. Vallejo case, and again right after the case, in 1976. Since then, there have been several minor amendments to the act. During the time in which Buckley v. Vallejo was debated, the Supreme Court makeup wasn't leaning towards any one side. The Chief Justice was Warren E. Berger, who was assist assisted by Associate Justices William J. Brennan Jr., Potter Stewart, Byron White, Thurgood Marshall, Harry Blackman, Lewis F. Powell Jr., William Rehnquist, and John P. Stevens. Out of these justices, only eight participated in the discussion and decision-making of this bill. John P. Stevens opted to sit this case out. Like I said before, the Supreme Court in 1975 was pretty balanced. On the conservative side was Chief Justice Berger, Lewis F. Powell Jr., and William Rehnquist. For the moderates, there was Potter Stewart and Byron White, and the liberals were represented by William J. Brennan Jr., who is said to be the lead liberal, in addition to Thurgood Marshall, Harry Blackman, and John P. Stevens. Those who agreed with the majority decision consisted of Justices Brennan, Stewart, and Powell fully, and in part by the remainder of the justices, Blackman, Marshall, Rehnquist, Berger, and White. The final decision stated, The First Amendment requires the invalidation of the Act's independent expenditure ceiling its limitation on a candidate's expenditures from his own personal funds, and its ceilings on overall campaign expenditures. Since those provisions place substantial and direct restrictions on the ability of candidates, restrictions that the First Amendment cannot tolerate. This is found on page 39. Chief Justice Berger finished the statement on January 30, 1976, by saying, the court holds that the commission, as presently constituted, is in conflict with the constitutional limitations, and it may exercise only such investigatory and other powers as are the same category that Congress may delegate to one of its own committees. As for the minority dissents, Justice Blackman disagreed completely, saying that contribution limits at all were fully unconstitutional, including personal contributions. Justice Rehnquist believed that it was unconstitutional to apply public funding provisions to minor parties. Chief Justice Berger believed that contribution limits were also unconstitutional, 
and that the disclosure of campaign contributions was unconstitutional as well. Justice White disagreed with the Federal Election Commission's appointment process. Justice Marshall disagreed with limiting personal contributions and expenditures by candidates to their own campaigns. As a result of Buckley v. Vallejo, there are three major court cases that took place after the fact, also discussing campaign finance regulations. The first would be Davis v. the Federal Election Commission. This case ruled that the Bipartisan Campaign Reform Act was unconstitutional by the First Amendment. In this case, the court also got rid of the Millionaire's Amendment and threw out legislations that permitted candidates to receive larger campaign contributions if their running opponent was rich, such as the millionaire. The second is Citizens United versus the Federal Election Commission. In Citizens United, the court ruled 5-4 to four, that restricting independent political expenditures by a non-profit organization is against the First Amendment of the Constitution. And lastly, there was the Arizona Free Enterprise PAC versus Bennett case in 2011, where the Supreme Court ruled that the state authority is not allowed to regulate campaign finance, specifically not allowing Arizona government to give money to candidates who oppose richer candidates. Overall, the landmark Supreme Court case, Buckley v. Vallejo, was the first case to address campaign finance, thus breaking the ice for many more Supreme Court cases to come that relate to the same topic of debate. The minority opinions of the initial Buckley v. Vallejo decision served to assist future cases regarding campaign finance.